Hey friends, yeah, Doc South here. Let me just, uh, Mr. Thumb, could you help me adjust this, please? Wait, oh, oh my heavens, yes. Yeah, please, if you would. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, it's, I just wanted to, okay. Uh, I know, I know, it is a little tough. Okay, what do you think? Do you like it better? I think. No, I think we can leave the door open. Sandy's not home right now, so that way if anyone, yeah, if someone knocks at the door, you know, what do you think? Huh? Okay. Tell you what, why don't you let me do my show, all right? If you would, please. Go back down in the basement there. boy. Good. Okay. Hi, friends. Sorry. My stagehand, Mr. Thumb. Uh, he, my sound engineer also. Trouble is, we got to find some uh, headphones that are small enough for him. I think, yeah. <sighs> I know, and he'd like a toupee. Yeah, he feels well. Mr. Thumb, come on back here a minute. I know. I, I, it's like, look who's talking. I know. I don't, I don't have much either. Gosh, we're both, you know, yeah, well, of course, and you could, you know, you, you certainly got my permission to wear a beard, sir. Yeah, well, anyway, but okay, if you would, go check the soundboard, if you would. Okay, anyway, yeah, friends, so I was talking with Mr. Thumb before we went, you know, started doing our thing here, and uh, gee, I guess we've got a, a pretty wild uh, hurricane coming. Uh, down to uh, down to the Carolinas, my old stomping grounds, um, Wilson, North Carolina. I, I don't know if they're, they look like they might be at least a little bit on the edge, and Wilson's kind of inland, uh, probably about 80 miles or so, I think 60 to 80 miles from the ocean. Um, so hopefully they'll be okay, you know, the, the winds will die down, although sounds like that rain's going to be the bugger, huh? Oh my God! Well, I, now I haven't heard a recent report, but I thought I heard something like three feet of rain. Jeez, that's that's an awful. That's that's a whole yard of water. Oh my gosh! The thing is, one thing, uh, the Carolina, the dirt down around there. At least what I saw when I lived in uh, in Wilson, uh, it was very sandy. So it does suck up quite a bit of the water. But then once it does. Uh, and you still got more coming. I don't know. It's, uh, I will just have to hope for the best. I know the, um, I'm assuming that area, the, uh, flatlands along, you know, from the shoreline inland quite a bit must have been, uh, ocean at one time, I'm assuming, and the, the ground raised up out of the water or the water receded. Um, and so maybe it will hold quite a bit and, uh, they won't have, you know, the, like around here where everything's kind of rocky, you know, they want to have three feet of water flying down the side of a mountain. That, that would be rough. Of course, now you get into the mountains, that could be tough. Let's, let's hope they're okay. <clears throat> it's, uh, the thing with, uh, hurricanes too, is all that, uh, the power lines going down, communications, um, oh gosh, the, once the power goes out, even, uh, that might shut down a radio station if, or, you know, they'll have to run on generator. It's, uh, things could be, uh, could be tough. My, my prayers out to those good people, wonderful folks in the Carolinas. I know when I was with the rescue <clears throat> down there in, uh, in Wilson, there was, um, I know we had a hurricane come once it was approaching and we all had a, a report to the squad hall. It was kind of actually, I, I hate to say it, but it was kind of cool. Uh, we were getting out the boats. We have rowboats and stuff. I guess some of the guys were into fishing, got some of their flat bottoms, you know, over at the, uh, to the squad hall. And gosh, we were, uh, we were loaded for bear, ready to roll. Uh, we did get some minor flooding. I don't think it was anything too bad. <clears throat> and we'd, uh, you know, but you'd row the boat out. Some of the folks that lived along the rivers and such uh, that went through the county, you know, got themselves stranded. So you'd, uh, you'd have, we'd have to row out, you know, drive as close as we could and then row out and get the people, uh, if they wanted to come out of their house, make sure they're okay, that kind of thing. And, and then get them, get them out of the, out of the house, maybe to neighbors that lived on higher ground. It was, or family was waiting for them. It was pretty neat. It was, uh, actually it was, it's kind of fun to do. I don't recall that we had to get anyone out of a window. Yeah, I think there was. I think there was one lady. Yeah, she had to climb out the window. Her house was kind of low to the, <clears throat> low to the ground in a in a bit of a, um, you know, like a little ravine. So the water was up pretty high. 
neat, neat lady. She, <laughs> she all mad her house is getting uh, flooded. And I don't blame her. I'd be mad too. Think all the stuff. God. And, uh, and then I don't know, all of a sudden the, the ground just <laughs> slurped it all up and it was gone. I think we were out, uh, all night for about, um, you know, for about one night. One, yeah, you know, and by morning it was relatively not too bad. Many of us could go home and, you know, and, uh, you know, write our memoirs. The only thing that really caused a lot of trouble, if I recall right, that, that particular evening was we had a spot on the, the major old highway that went through town, not the interstate that was west of town. There was uh, old Route 301. It used to go right that that used to be the north south line uh to um uh to you know from the north down to florida or you would take route 1 which went through raleigh and uh, you know southbound and and eventually into florida but the uh but 301 was kind of sort of the coastline route or also route 17 but we had 301 going through wilson and there was this one spot where evidently they must have built a railroad and it's, and it was a busy railroad a freight line a uh, lot of factories in wilson and uh processing plants <clears throat> for tobacco and oh gosh everything from uh, yams to uh, bacon you know a lot of stuff coming in there and uh, a lot of it went by train and so they uh, they had a train line that was built at one time or another, and they I think they actually had to make Route 301 go under. In other words, the train bridge was the overpass. Route 301 went under, right? And so it I think they had to. I'm assuming they had to dig out a hole. It looks to me like that's what they had to do. Someone decided rather than go over the highway, uh, over the railroad, go under it. Somehow that would be better. Well, everything would be fine till uh, one day uh, when you get a hurricane <laughs> or flooding rain. Uh, now you got yourself a, a lake right there in the middle of 301. And I guess like, generally the, the police would set up a roadblock. They'd set up a roadblock on both sides, north and south of the, uh, <clears throat> of the uh, underpass. And meanwhile, that thing would be filling up with water, get about three foot deep maybe a little deeper. And uh, again, the road blocks up, but if the policeman turned his head just for a second to have a sip of coffee or look over, I don't know, look over at, uh, you know, heaven knows what on the side of the road, someone wants directions or, you know, where do they go from here? Uh, if someone will sure as heck go driving into that doggone yeah, underpass. They figure they can make it. Man, next thing you know, they're in three and a half feet of water and nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're stuck. And what they did was they kept, um, they kept, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, tow trucks, tow trucks handy. And, uh, and we'd often be there with a boat and you'd take the hook from the tow truck and we'd row out and, uh, give the guy the, uh, give the guy the hook, uh, and, or if, if it's a lady or someone elderly, well, you'd hook it up for him. You'd jump in the water and hook it around the bumper signal to the tow truck, everybody get out of the way. The person's in there, uh, in the boat with us now. We're rowing them back and they get, uh, they get hauled out. And of course, when they get to shore, <laughs> their car's got every, you know, it's got like, uh, you know, catfish in it from all the, uh, yeah, yeah, the catfish move right in and, uh, frogs and stuff, snapping turtles and the, uh, and they get themselves a nice ticket for going past a roadblock. And, uh, oh my gosh, it's, I, there'd, there'd be all sorts of folks show up to get, to watch this. Yeah. It was like, uh, again, that's one neat thing about the South was they, something like that, draw a crowd. Hey, look at that. Here you go. Hey, <laughs> not, ah, then pull him out and kind of point and laugh when he gets his ticket. <laughs> and, oh my. Yeah. And you do that all darn near all night. I don't know why, but people would do it. They just go right on through. I don't know. Oh, gosh. You could almost have a guy say, you know, you can almost make money for the squad selling hot dogs and stuff there, you know. Hot dogs here. Don't miss the next flood by heading off to get something to eat. Get it right here. If you get a chili dog, right, right here, mister. Yeah, we got another one coming. I, I hear we got one coming right. Oh, there goes one right now. Yeah, yeah. Shh. 
<laughs> I guess they figure how deep could it be? I don't know. Anyway. No, they didn't just catch Yankees. Everybody, yeah, no, equal opportunity uh, uh, roadblock, that's for sure. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, that's a wrap, friends. Again, not to make light of, uh, of a hurricane, let's hope this one winds up not being as bad as the hype. But boy, I don't know. It looks like a, looks like a bad one. And that wind can get tough too. A tree brings down the wires and stuff. Man, look out, mama. So again, my thoughts with my, uh, my old friends down down in the Carolinas. Lovely state. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye now.